everybody. Uh, my name is Amanda Christian. I'm a, one of the instructors for the Human Services Program. And my name is Alyssa Dunlap. I'm the academic advisor for the Human Services Program here at Davidson Davy Community College. We just want to say thank you for joining us and um, welcome you to our uh, little introduction to our Human Services Programs here at DDCC. Um, as you'll notice, I have a quote on the front page actually from one of our current students. And I've actually invited my students to provide some input um, with just some of their quotes throughout. Um, just try to include them so you could hear a little bit from their perspective and what they're planning to do. Um, with our presentation today, uh, it should only take 20, 25 minutes. And we really want you to know what the field's about, um, as well as get a really good picture of what kind of um, classes you'll be taking and just a little bit more detail on the program itself. Great. So our human services field is very broad and there's just not enough slides to mention everything that encompasses uh, the human services field. But the bottom line is um, anybody that works in the human services field is really someone that's helping others overcome adversity through strength-based approaches. Uh, we do a lot of empowerment and working with um, the person to uh, really reach their full potential. And so human services is really broad and it's kind of that generic term. So we'll get into a little bit more depth and some specific ideas uh, in, the, in the next few slides. So now that you have kind of a general idea of what the human services field consists of, you might be wondering, what is the job outlook? What does that look like? And so just to give you a little bit of insight into the demand for this field, um, the human services field is ever growing um, for the next decade, it's projected to have extremely strong um, job growth and um, the ability to allow for a lot of upward mobility. So that's that ability to start working for a company and gradually work your way up to more advanced positions. And then to be a little bit more specific, the Bureau of Labor Statistics has stated that they project a 17% growth from 2019 to 2020. And, um, you know, a big part of that is the growing elderly population, as well as some impacts that we've all experienced from COVID-19, which Mandy will discuss next. So one of the um, great things about our community college is we have area-wide community connections. And so every few months we reach out to our community partners to gain feedback on community needs, programs, things like that. And so one of the things that's been a hot topic, as you can imagine, has been the, the COVID impacts. And for this field in particular, um, those impacts are going to really increase the job growth and the job needs um, more so than it's even been what's been included in what we've had in the previous slides. And so what local, local agencies are reporting is there's an increase in social services needs, educational needs, financial needs, housing, mental health needs, all of which encompasses human services. And we really feel like this impact is going to last years um, currently. So just real quick, I just wanted to kind of lay out there, you know, my experience in the human services field. As you can see, since 1995, I've been in the human services field in some facet or another. And I started out with my associate degree. Um, and for a good 10 years, I worked in the human services fields in entry level positions, really trying to identify my niche and what population that I really enjoyed working with. And as you can see, though, I went back and got additional degrees along the way there were um, some awesome opportunities that I had in the human services field. And trust me when I say there was no lack in trying to find a job. I always found a job. I always found something that was in my niche and that I enjoyed doing. And uh, I'm so happy now to be instructing and using my experiences in our human services program. So real quick, I, you probably saw my timeline, a few of the populations like at-risk adolescents. Um, I also worked with students with um, mental illness and developmental disability needs. The field also has uh, room for us to work with homeless individuals and people with mental illness, 
um, vocational rehab clients and even veterans and so many more again that I just can't mention. So just like this field serves a very diverse population, um, that's also the case for the students who tend to enroll in the human services programs here at Davidson Davy. Um, we have students from all types of backgrounds, um, ages, and that really only enhances the quality of this program and the relationships that students are able to build with each other. Um, so keep in mind that you really get to learn from each other in this program and we want students to be able to bring their authentic selves um, to this program, to class, um, because again, that only adds value to what you learn and how you learn it. And of course, as I told you, we're going to include some of our student thoughts and feedback uh, throughout this presentation. And just in casually asking some of my students, you know, what do you want to do with your two year degree? What are your plans? Uh, this is a few of their comments. So I have one that's going to work with homeless veterans. Uh, she's also looking at trying to open her own agency. Uh, I have several students that plan on working in the field of substance abuse. I have one student who wants to go to work for a while and then transfer and major in social work. And then I have one that has already working in a housing placement um, agency as uh, like working the front desk and she would like to move into more of a case management position. So typically at the two year level graduates work under the direction of someone. Um, it depends on the agency, of course. So working under a social social worker, working under healthcare workers, psychologists, uh, rehab therapists, and then many other areas, as you know. So a lot of times as an academic advisor for this program, students will ask me, well, what kind of a job can I get? And, um, you know, what, what does this lead to once I earn my associate in applied science and human services? And this is just a sample list of things that you might find if you're searching for a job um, as a human services assistant. Um, so you can see there that there is a lot of different types of job titles. It's not limited to just one. Um, and this is really due to the fact that um, there's different populations that you might be able to work with, like Mandy mentioned, um, and then there's different types of agencies as well. So, um, you know, if you're interested in this program, a good thing to start asking yourself is, you know, is there a certain type of population that you're really passionate in working with um, that you can start, um, you know, just kind of scoping out what are the, some of the job prospects. So traits in the human services field, and this is just really like, you know, if you've ever heard some of these things, maybe the human services field would be an, uh, uh, an ideal field for you. Do you have good listening skills? Um, we certainly work on those listening skills. We really develop what's called active listening skills, but it's always good to be able to come in with some uh, uh, good ways to listen to others and be able to reflect to others. Cultural awareness is huge. Uh, we're working with a vast population um, so we, we definitely want to work on uh, awareness of diversity and, and cultural awareness and you have some opportunities in the classes to actually interact with different cultures than yourself. Um, so you have an opportunity to practice and become comfortable. Empathy, empathy, right? Being able to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. Um, so this goes beyond sympathy, right? We need to be able to kind of stand in that person's shoes and see life from their perspective. Uh, certainly a compassion and a desire to help others because that's what the human services field is all about. Uh, the attention to detail. I have a lot of students that are very organized. They call themselves type A's. Uh, of course, they're going to do well with human services. There's lots of paperwork on the other side of things too. We work on this. We develop this skill as well while you're in our program. And then those interpersonal skills that those communication skills, um, communicating orally in writing and things like that, we work along the way. All right, so just to give you an idea of the different programs that we offer under human services here at Davidson Davy Community College, um, we'll start off at the top with our human services technology associate in applied science degree. It's a total of 65 credits. 
And if you are attending full time and take classes during the summer, you can anticipate completing that degree in approximately two years. And you know that may depend on transfer credit. If you have any transfer credit you're coming into Davidson Davy with. Next is the Human Services Technology Diploma. It's 43 credits. And the diploma is um, something that we call a stackable credential. And the reason for that is because if you complete the Human Services Technology Associate Applied Science degree, you are also completing the Human Services Technology Diploma because all of those requirements are built into that associate's degree. And then next we have the Human Services Substance Abuse Certificate. Um, so this is a great option for anybody who may be working in the human services field and they want to take this by itself and just gain some more insight specifically into substance abuse. It's a total of 18 credits. And um, it's important to note that with this certificate, there are some additional state requirements to become a licensed substance abuse counselor. Um, and if you wanna take this by itself, uh, the classes for it do start in spring semesters and then it can be completed as early as the following summer. Um, so it's a very quick certificate program. And then if this is something that you want to add on to the either the human services diploma or degree, you can absolutely do that. It only adds on two more classes, which is six credits to your academic plan. And that is the Substance Abuse 130 and Substance Abuse 137 classes. And then lastly, we have the Human Services Career College Promise Certificate. It's also 18 credits. And this is a great option for high school students who think they might be interested in human services. And um, once they complete it, if that's something they still want to pursue, they can jump into um, you know, the Substance Abuse Certificate, the Diploma, or the Human Services Associate in Applied Science degree. So you might be wondering, you know, how does this program work? Well, there are both full-time and part-time options, which can be really great if you are um, working and going to school or you've just got some other commitments going on outside of school. If you are attending full-time, that means you're taking at least 12 credits or more every semester. Uh, that's not including summers. Summers are usually just kept at six credits. And if you're part-time, um, just know that that means it will take you longer than the two years to complete the degree. But again, you get that added flexibility. And with a part-time plan, you're taking between six and nine credits every semester. This is what we call a fall start program. And what that means is the intro level human services classes you're probably really interested in starting, those start in fall semesters only. And uh, you might be wondering, well, what if I end up starting in the summer or the spring? And that is absolutely fine if you do that because we can start you out with any general education classes that you need. And then in that next fall semester, you can start with the human services courses if that's the best fit and layout for your academic plan. Uh, some other great features about this program is that it is both online and hybrid. Um, so when you start those intro level human services classes, they do have to be taken in order. Um, you have to continue in that sequence because this is a cohort program, which is nice because you really get to know the students who are in your class and you're with them for those two years. Um, so You'll continue to build upon that knowledge after you take those intro level human services courses. And um, those human services courses are mostly online. There is going to be one human services course that is offered one night per week each semester. Um, and it will either be in person or virtual. So again, a lot of flexibility in how you lay out your schedule and the general education classes, those can be taken online or in person. So whatever way you learn best um, for those classes, you can tailor that to your needs. And another great feature of this program is that you have clinicals in your final semester where you will you know, do your background check ahead of time 
and you'll get placed with a local agency and be able to get some hands-on experience that you can put on a resume. And then next, we've got just a general layout. This is not necessarily the, the classes that you would take every single semester because again, um, your academic plan can be tailored to some degree. And the reason for that is because like I mentioned before, human services classes are offered in certain semesters and they do need to be taken in order. So looking at this um, first column of classes over here, you've got your first year of human services classes. And in that fall semester, you'll start with human services 110 and 112. And then you'll see that in the next spring semester, you'll add on more of those human services classes and then a substance abuse class. So human services classes are notated with the letters HSE. Substance abuse classes are notated with the letters SAB. And you'll notice there's a couple of substance abuse classes that have two asterisks by them. Those are those two classes that you would add on for the substance abuse certificate if that's something that you wanna do. And those are the semesters that they're offered in. Then you look at your second year of human services classes, and you've got in the fall semester, three human services classes, and then those two classes that are in the second spring semester, those are your uh, clinical classes. And then the third column is a list of the general education classes for this degree program. And these classes are offered just about every single semester, so fall, spring, and summer. There are a few that are only offered in fall and or spring, but again, uh, these can be placed in a variety of uh, ways with your academic plan. So you can really set it up in the way that you need it to be. So exactly what are you gonna learn in these classes? Uh, we do a lot of self-awareness work, uh, and then we also really apply understanding social and psychological impacts of different issues, such as domestic violence, child abuse, disabilities, homelessness, mental health, the aging population, and many more. Uh, of course, we do foundational understanding and how it's related to human services. We review professional standards and our ethical responsibilities in the field. Again, we do interpersonal and cross-cultural effective communication where you have an opportunity to interview someone from another country. Um, we study family structure and the addiction process. We utilize a lot of case studies in the classroom so you can really practice these things that you're learning along the way from case management to practicing interviewing and counseling and crisis techniques. Um, and then, of course, you get that clinicals that uh, Alyssa was talking about. You really get that real world application uh, that you do an internship your last semester. So then it lets you get into your niche or the niche you're interested in, um, at least to the best of our ability. Uh, so you can actually get in that field and network and, and get com more comfortable with the role. So next, uh, we're going to talk about some of the strengths of this program. Sorry, y'all, I'm a little slow on my mouse. <laughs> got a slow build here. So just recently, as of last week, uh, Miss Amanda Christian was awarded the Excellence in Teaching Award here at Davidson Davy Community College. And we are so incredibly proud of her. Um, so happy that she's in this program. Um, and this award really highlighted her commitment and dedication to students here at Davidson Davy. So you are getting a one of a kind instructor um, who really cares about you um, and has a lot of great real world application and is, is gonna do everything that she can to help you uh, be successful in this program. Thank you, Alyssa. I just want you all to know this is my slide. That was Alyssa's slide. I did she not didn't ask know her that I put that, that in there. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, a surprise. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we've kind of talked about a lot of our program strengths already, right? So a lot of the courses, actually, most of the courses are completely online. So you can work on them throughout the week according to your schedule. Um, of course, we're instructors, so we typically still have due dates. We want to keep you 
you know, going and moving through the work, but usually it's pretty free how you how you do it during the week um, as you get your your work done. <laughs> um, a few of the courses have lab components where we meet in the evening one time a week. Uh, when we do this, it's typically virtually. I have had students that ask, would I be willing to meet kind of in the classroom and meet virtually? Yes, I'm open to that. Um, I just I discuss that with my students as we have those classes. Uh, your instructors right now that you have have direct experience in the field of human services. So I come from a counseling background and a therapeutic day treatment director. And I do believe that your other instructor also has similar experiences right now. Um, you get to come into this program in a cohort. So you really get to know your peers. You're doing activities with them consistently and constantly. You have them for collaboration, but also support as you work through the program. And then as you saw, Alyssa really shared with you how that program is already laid out for you. So you know when your classes, what classes are coming and when you're taking them. Um, so those expectations um, are already there for you. All right, so next we're going to talk about earning a bachelor's degree. And um, some of you might be wondering, just like Mandy mentioned earlier, she earned her bachelor's degree after her associate's degree. And we have a student who's currently in the program, at least one, um, who's expressed some interest in pursuing a bachelor's degree in social work. So that is absolutely possible um, as a part of you know, completing the Associate in Applied Science and Human Services degree you can transfer to a public or a private university to earn that bachelor's degree. And just to give you a little bit of, um, you know, frame of reference, bachelor's degrees are typically 120, maybe 126 credits maximum. And, um, you know, you want the credits from your associate's degree as many as possible to apply towards uh, the credits for a bachelor's degree. So just know that that 120 to 126 range is not in addition to what you're completing here. Um, you have different types of transfer credits as a part of completing this degree. So earlier we talked about that list of HSE and SAB classes, um, and then also the list of general education classes. So just know that those may transfer a little differently depending on the four-year school that you want to attend. Um, there might be a range of anywhere between 18 or 36 credits, maybe even more, that will count towards those total credits for a bachelor's degree, um, just depending on the type of school that you transfer to and the major that you want to pursue there. Some general transfer recommendations from me as an academic advisor is um, it's really important to research which four-year schools you are interested in as early as possible and also to talk with your academic advisor, which is me, um, so that we can start mapping out what is the plan to do this. And, um, you know, this is a process, so treat it more like a marathon than a sprint, um, because that'll make it much more manageable. So the earlier that we're able to meet and start looking at the steps and the information that you need to uh, complete along the way, it's gonna make that process more manageable the other thing that it's going to do is it's going to give you an idea as to the types of goals that you need to set, especially for your GPA, so that you can meet those transfer admissions requirements and get into the program of your choosing. So if you uh, have more questions, concerns, um, things that you would like to kind of talk through, our information is on the screen for you. Uh, we'd be glad to uh, either one of us uh, talk you through. And of course, if it's a little bit more specific to the program, I might refer you over to Alyssa and vice versa, but we are uh, good contacts to try to help walk you through this uh, understanding of our program. And we just thank you so much for joining us. And Alyssa, do you have anything else to say? Nope, that's it. Um, thank you so much for watching our presentation, for joining us. Um, and like Mandy said, please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you've got any questions about the program. We're both very happy to help you navigate that process along the way. Have a wonderful day. See y'all.